you come up and stand with us. Uh, we're not going to ask you to do anything. Just stand and represent.
them right now and let them know it's never too late to be saved. Let them know, Lord, that the wages of sin is death. Yeah. But the gift of God is yeah. eternal life. Yeah, yes. We can't thank you enough, thank Father. You, Father, we thank you for our world and possessions that you allow us to have. Yeah. Yeah. The things that we as your children take for granted. Yeah. The food that we eat, the clothes on our backs, the roofs over our heads. Father, we thank you. Yeah. But we realize it's not necessarily has to be so. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only because of your love, your grace, and your goodness. Father, we pray that your spirit be present in this worship service tonight. Yeah, yeah. That something may be said or done that might bring someone closer to you. Yeah. And as I end this short prayer, Father, I want to thank you for the most perfect gift of all. Yeah. Your darling son, Jesus. Yeah, so. Who hung yeah. and died on Calvary. Yeah. That we yeah. might have a right to, to your life. Yeah. And Father, when I finish all the tasks that you pray for me to do in this life, I pray I hear your holy voice. Uh -huh. Say, well done. Well done, I agree. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Come on up a little higher when we praise your holy name throughout our eternity. These are all blessings we give thanks in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God be good.
we are prepared today to hear from God. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, Let me thank yeah, these preachers in the last being here. Oh, yeah. Thank God for uh, 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 Reverend William Turner. Amen. And formerly Amen. the pastor, now I believe, for what? Pastor Emeritus. Yes. I'm a new revelation. I've been a new revelation. I've been a pastor there for years. Amen. Praise the God. Man, we're happy uh, to see my dear friend, um, Pastor J.W. Brown. Yes, Welcome back to church. Good to see him. It's good to see Pastor Lovely Haynes. We get along better than you. That's Lovely Haynes. Amen. And I'm saying Martin Baptist Church. Um, um, uh, Pastor Walker, who's one of our speakers, Robert Walker. Yeah. 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 We are so blessed. We are in deep. We're in high time. Yeah. Right. We got a president of the state convention. Right. Right. Is it California? Yes, California State in the person of our dear friend and brother, Pastor Gaddis, Pastor E. Wayne Gaddis. Amen. And then we have Dr. Robinson, who is a, uh, the pastor of Community Baptist Church. And that's in Redlands. But also uh, our vice president of our conference. Amen. Amen. We're glad to see all of you here. I look out there and I see my president friend. President. <laughs> president Daryl Moore. Come on, give God a hand for you. Amen. Amen. And the conference, the, the main conference, Baptist Minister Fellowship. Amen. Amen. I look to my right, I All see right. my comrade, my brother. Amen. Uh, Dr. R. O. Harris. Because yeah. R. O. Harris is one of them. Who did that one? I appreciate who is here at Mass Royal. And so we're excited and praising God for that. Now, um, the ones who have come to minister in song, uh, would you come forward now and after they have sang uh, the next speaking voice you'll hear would be that of Pastor Ryan Small. Now let me just say this. Let me just say this. Open your heart. Because I believe God has a word for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. That's his daughter. That's his wife. I, I'm sorry. That's, uh, I'm in that family. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. 
ready for a revival? Are you ready for a revival? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. We just want to worship a little bit. We had some praise, but can we just worship this for a moment before? I want to bring my daughter, Sister Brianna Small, if she would come with my hallelujah belongs to you.
wonderful, so kind, so merciful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been real good. Real good, yeah. Even yet. God, we still need a revival. Yes, yes.
Baptist Minister's Conference, uh, Pastor William Turner. Um, I praise God for him. Yeah. Many years ago, he didn't know it, but I would be hanging out in Pasadena in Revelation <laughs> with his son. I started out on the drums. His son was a drummer, and we were cool like that. If you will. <laughs> and then uh, many years later, I find myself in the president's cabinet with him at the ABC. That's amazing. The same as Pastor Donald Gray Robinson, Dr. Donald Gray Robinson. Yes. Yes. Been watching him for many years and was excited to be one of the vice presidents along with him and then so many others. And then I find my way into the Progressive Baptist State Convention and get to run up elbows with California's <laughs> president of Pasadena <laughs> yes. 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 And then he's even invited me to preach uh, for their upcoming mm -hmm. convention. I Here praise God for that. And uh, I guess I might as well call the roll. <laughs> Pastor Darrell Moore, who was yeah. part of the moderator staff for the Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Association, yeah. where I served as first vice and he is second vice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What can we say about Pastor Lovely Haynes? I thank God. Thank you for praying for me before we got out here tonight. And then for a greater starlight, folk, uh, uh, we heard what happened here on yesterday. And thank you for getting the mic fixed uh, after uh, Dr. R. W. Harris uh, <laughs> wrecked the house, if you will, with John Cobb. <laughs> say something about the woman that uh, feeds us all on every Monday and does not break the bank, but thank yeah, God for right. being here. Yeah, yeah. here. I see her all over Facebook and she knows every single pastor. She feeds me on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I still have a little money left over on Tuesday. Amen. If I forgot Please forgive me. The song number 80, song number 80, it is a part of the theme. Oh, no. It is part of the theme. Number 80. There's so much in there. He starts out, face out, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, <clears throat> who you lead, Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. There's some more stuff in there, but verse number three, restore us, O God, let your faith shine, that we may be saved. <laughs> Some other stuff in there. Uh, verse number seven says, Restore us. Uh, 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 let your face shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we may be saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole lot of other stuff in there, but verse 18 says, Then we shall not turn back from you. Uh, uh, Give us life. And we will call upon your name. But remember verse 3 and remember verse 7 and verse 19. Restore us, O oh Lord. Is he stuttering? God of hosts, let your face shine that we might be saved. If I had to put a title to the text, which I don't, because we're here for this one thing, I would say, revive us yet once again. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> that every spot. Yeah. 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 Revive us, man. Yes, sir. Yet once again. That's a lot. Around the year 1980, <clears throat> Local and very well known woman to us. I think just about everyone in here knows her by name, and you probably have her phone number. 
she penned words to a now well-known song that asked a metaphorical question just prior to testifying of God's unmerited favor through his grace and his mercy. My, 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 my. This rhetorical question posed that immediately draws the listeners and even the singer's attitude towards praise and adoration is this. Tell us, Reverend. If it had not been for the Lord yeah. on my side, tell me where would I be? All right, sir. All right, sir. Before most could get a good holler. At just the thought of God's goodness, his grace, and his mercy. Well, by testimonies through the lyrics of the song, it was evident that God had did the same for this singer-songwriter as he had done for so many as just about everybody that has ever sang or listened to this song would agree with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept my enemies yes, right. away. Yeah. Yeah. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Y'all know how he rocks you in the cradle of his arm. Yes. When he knew what? I had been battered and so, so if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, please somebody tell me where would I be. As a matter of fact, somebody ought to just look back over your life and tell me, where would you be if it wasn't for the Lord on your side? Asaph, the psalmist, psalm number 80, begins this particular prayer by, number one, humbling himself by saying, verse number one, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, or in essence, humbly appeals to the Lord by acknowledging him as David did in Psalm number 23 when he calls him the shepherd of Israel. Yeah, yeah. Listen at how the psalmist addresses God. Even though he is humble in his acknowledgement of who God is, he also does so with the urgency. Let me see if y'all know this one. He does it with the urgency of a dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. I see somebody, a Marine or a Navy person or Army person has figured something out because you're smiling. But the dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot is more as cold as Asaph is sending out an S-O-S. He says, verse number one, he says in my mind, he says, please God, listen. Verse number two, he says, come and save us. But he adds to the S-O-S, verse number three, when he says, please, when he pleads, he says, turn us again to yourself, O oh God. And when you do so, please cause your face to shine and then we will be saved. Preach, Ryan. I'm certainly trying here. I've got a whole bunch of witnesses out here that can tear this uh, text up and, and spit it out. I'm trying to preach, Mama. If God does give me a few amens, we'll get out of here. And Asaph, he displays his grief on behalf of Israel as he laments this fierce discipline that God has exuded amongst the people. He cries out something like I do when my wife is mad at me. He says, Lord, 
How long are you going to be mad? <laughs> Some of y'all married men know what I'm talking about. Uh, we recognize a very uh, similar displeasure of God throughout the Psalms. Uh, you're some Bible readers in here. Some of y'all know uh, Psalm number six where David says, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. He says, have mercy on me, for I am weak. He says, Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. He says, my soul is sore. But Lord, how long? Psalm 28. Y'all weren't familiar with Psalm 6, Psalm 28. He says, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. He says, please don't turn a deaf ear to me, because if you do, I become like them that go down into the pit. He says, please, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. So they're crying out, God, I need you. Y'all didn't like uh, number six, you didn't like 28, Psalm 61. Here it comes again. He says, hear my cry, oh God, attend unto my prayer from the end of the earth. I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. He says, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Thou hast been a shelter for me and a, a strong tower from the enemy. But remember what happens in verse number two when he says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. In essence, he's saying, from the end of the earth, God, where are you? He says, from the end of the earth, I cry out, God, where are you? He says, I need you. And here we are, though, in a time where we sing how we love the Lord. Y'all know that song? Oh, yeah. We heard Whitney sing it so beautifully. All right. He heard my cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitied every groan. Yeah, yeah. Long as I live and troubles rise, I hasten unto the throne. Yeah. We sing another song on Sunday morning. I love to sing it at Greater New Jerusalem. Y'all probably sing it too. But if you don't, here's a wonderful song that says, there is a name that I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood. The sinner's perfect plea. We used to go to the chorus, but there's another verse that says, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. We sing this part real good. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved me. Yet, we find ourselves in a position that we call, let me say that again, we, we find ourselves in a position, I want to say it clearly, yet we call and have the audacity to schedule a revival. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out. I don't want to get in trouble with you. I don't, I don't, want, to be, I don't want to be too managed. Uh, Pastor Lewis, I, I do have manners, but please, can I be real just for a minute? Some people ain't going to like this because I've learned in my few years of preaching that people don't like hearing the negative stuff about them. They just want to hear the good stuff. But, 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 but here it is. We have the audacity to schedule a revival. For some, a revival is where you go once a year on the calendar 
And I don't know why you got me up here, but but when we go normally to a revival, we, we go to hear some good down home preaching. Uh, we I don't know why I'm here. We we go to a revival to hear some of the best of the best closers in the hooping business of preaching. Uh, we we used to have when I was a little boy these meetings on the outside in a tent where people came to get saved and said we had a revival. But but can I tell you? I asked you if I could be real. But can I tell you? We can't just do a revival like it's something that we choose. But we have to do some things first. Number one, we've got to pray that the Lord sends a revival. And, and, and I don't want to get in trouble, so, so give me a moment or two to get these rattled thoughts out of my mind and prayerfully it'll make some sense uh, by the time I'm through. And if not, Praise God that that, that Pastor uh, Roderick Walker is, is here to clean it up on tomorrow for me. And then Dr. J.W. Brown will put the cookies on the Lord's shelf so we all can get some of this. First, let me say, in order for there to be a revival, we've got to, number one, recognize that we need restoration. Lord, But then... Also, in order for restoration to happen, there needs to be something to be restored. Put a pin there. I'll be right back. There are quite a few songs that are appropriate to share at the moment to somehow prove my point. Can I go back to another song? I think I gave you six and 28 and 80. I gave you all that. Can we go to Psalm number 107? Right. Psalm 107 reminds us to do this. Oh, give thanks oh, yeah. unto the Lord. Oh. Why? For he is good and his mercy endureth how long? Forever. But then it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So in 107, there are groups of people. I, I oh. have to do a little study. There are groups of people. I won't go over everything and everybody, but there's groups of people mentioned in Psalm 1, 107 who represent the redeemed of the Lord. It is there where we find people, number one, who were lost. We find people who were in bondage. We find people Dr. Island, good to see you, President of Progressive Baptist State Convention. We find people who are in sickness. Yes. Well, but then we also find people in Psalm 107 who are shipwrecked in distress. Well, who end up finding the Lord who answers their prayers by delivering them from the hand of the oppressor. Yes. Who ultimately expresses their thanks unto the Lord. But then they too cry aloud to the Lord because of their oppression and from the debts that he delivered them from. And I don't know what God has delivered you from, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but you ought to tell the Lord thank you. You're asking for a revival, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Now, perhaps you once was lost, but because of God's amazing grace, now you're found blind, but now you see. I talk to my good friend, uh, Pastor Walker, almost every day, sometimes three, four, 17 times a day. And, and, and uh, I heard Pastor Walker last year during the revival and a few months ago when he preached at Greater New Jerusalem and I heard him on yesterday when he preached at Praises of Zion singing one of Bishop Walter Hawkins' tunes that, that put it plain and simple. He said, tragedies are commonplace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All kinds of diseases. Yeah. People are slipping away. Yeah. The economy's down. Can't get enough pay. 
But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Go to the next verse. Folk without homes, people living in the street, drug having sons say they can't be mothers and robbers. No place seems to be safe. Watch this. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And I've got to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. How come? Why? Because it could have been me. Thank you. Outdoors, thank you. No food, thank you. No clothes, thank you. All alone, thank you. With no friends, thank you. Just another number, thank you. With a tragic end, thank you. But you didn't see fit, thank you. To let none of these things be, thank you. Every day by your power, thank you. You keep on keeping me. I just got to say, thank you, Lord. But Some millennials out there 
who are actually grandparents already. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all know that? that? That's another sermon. I, I won't go there. But the research shows that Generation Z, those that are between the ages of 11 and 26 years old, watch this, are the least religious and spiritual generation. Well, the research shows they are losing or they have already lost their spirituality. They lack the basic knowledge of the religious or spiritual traditions of families that they were not only born in, but they were raised in. What, what, what does that mean? They were born into families that knew and leaned and depended on the Lord. Right. Well, they went to church with Big Mom and them. But they are losing or already have lost all of their interest in spiritual well-being. Well, Generation Z is the least spiritual. Remember I said, according to research, y'all won't get mad at me, it's research. In that a third of them, 33%, have no religion at all. And it's almost the same proportion of the generation of their parents, the millennials. And so this Pew Research, it shows that Generation Z is more likely to identify as being either atheist or agnostic. Right. And most of them think that going to church is worthless and a complete waste of time. Y'all know that Generation Z they, they'll celebrate a holiday, but they don't believe in the reason for the day, like Christmas. They don't believe that's the day that we celebrate the birth of Christ. They, they'll, they'll celebrate Easter, what we know as Resurrection Day, Resurrection, Resurrection Sunday. And although they'll get dressed up, they'll go out to eat, they might even go to the church house, but it's just to please mama and daddy or to see the children do their Easter speech. But research says... Some or most of them don't even believe in the resurrection. Right. I'm almost done with this. All right. So, right. as you can see, and what I just shared about what we are facing with young people, let, let me be clear, it's more than young people who are not staying with the Lord. Right. It's more than young people who are not coming to Christ. Right. But it's a whole lot of us older folk that ain't staying with the Lord either. Unless I digress too far. But some of us say about some of the young folk when they do stop by the church and don't act the way that they are supposed to when they're in the house of the Lord or when they mess up. Y'all want to know what we say? Didn't your mama and your daddy teach you any better about how to act in the church? Quite frankly, the answer in so many cases is no. For the simple fact of the matter is that some of their parents and grandparents don't come no more or don't know how to act in church either. But I thank God for a praying grandmother that said, boy, I'm going to give you some acting lessons. Uh, when it gets bad, I got some acting lessons. I got some professional acting lessons. Some of us, all right, all right, all right, all right. Some of us, it ain't because of our acting lessons, but some of us blame it on the pandemic. So they stay home and they just say they're going to worship virtually. And I ain't knocking the, the, the virtual worship because it, it's helped a lot of us local churches reach folk from what Jerry Duffy used to say, from sea to shine and sea. And, 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 and they, who otherwise couldn't be with us due to the distance or their circumstance. And let me tell you, let me brag a little bit, godly bragging that is, at the Greater New family, we've got some real faithful virtual members that don't live, and some of them ain't never been to California, some of them ain't even ever been to the United States of America, but they participate in worship 
They tithe. They send their offering. They pray for the pastor. And they get fed the word of God. And, and I bet you right now, Sister Gloria, that somebody, some virtual member from Greater New Jerusalem is on there watching us right now. But for those of us that know better and have the ability and have the opportunity to come and spend some time in worship have essentially turned away. But at the same time, they're wondering why God ain't blessed me. Worship has become secondary. I, I mean, going to church has become secondary. Actually, church and worship has become secondary or third dairy or fourth dairy or half the dairy. And, and because worship quite Frankly, it's not even on the list for some of us to do anymore. Some of us who know better got lazy on Sunday, but have found time to do everything else. They found time to go everywhere else. And let the truth be told, some of us preachers, I'm going to get off of the parishioners, but some of us preachers and pastors, we've grown or are growing weary. Can I, can I just preach to the fellas for a moment? Yeah, man. Uh, some of us uh, really are ready to throw in the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the verge of quitting because of God's people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Hold on. God's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If not that, some of us have been preaching so long that we got tired of studying and Preparing Lord them sermons. Lord Some of us are tired because we show up either on Zoom, Facebook, or even in the church house for Wednesday night Bible study and only one or two people show up. And we're tired of that. Members, I got to tell them, brothers, but members have gotten on our last nerve. And we can't take it no more. Right. See, they, they don't want to say it. They don't ever, just weak if it's good. Do something, just twitch or something if I'm telling tell the truth. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, preachers, let me tell you that we were put here on assignment uh -huh. and appointment yes, to help mature and help establish the people for the work of ministry yes. of Jesus the Christ. As the Bible declares, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that not only our young people, but also that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Y'all, right. I'm back. Let me hurry on. We recognize that we are in a time and a place where we need restoration. Yeah. Because if we're not honest with ourselves, if we, if we really are honest with ourselves, please be honest just for a moment because you came for revival. If you're honest with yourself, we really ain't been acting right. We are our own worst enemy. In that we give people the material to talk bad about as Christians who are supposed to know better and are supposed to be better Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and if you ain't caught yet, God ain't too happy about the stuff that we've been involved in. Right. My, 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 my. And the folly that we as his people have engaged in. Right. I wish I had one witness. Oh, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us who we claim to have been redeemed, some of us also have sickness. And disease. Oh, 
and famine oh, Lord. and laziness and church folk against church folk. Some of us got some backstabbing. Some of us are full of lies and deceit. Some of us are pouring ourselves out. Some of us are practicing in paganism and all kinds of sinful upheaval. Just like y'all remember Nineveh and y'all remember Corinth and y'all remember Israel and y'all remember Judah. Let me tell you, even though they disobeyed God and went against him, and he surely was mad as a Billy Goat Hornet, whatever that is. That's one of them country things that I heard down in Louisiana somewhere. But God has said time and time again, just like in Jeremiah chapter number three, when God told the prophet to tell the people, return thou backslide in Israel, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. God says, for I am merciful, and I will not keep my anger forever. He says, just acknowledge your iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. Watch what he says. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I just took you through 10 minutes of that beating up us pastors to tell you this. When we acknowledge the fact that in order for restoration to happen, we first have to have something that can be restored. And since we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we do in fact have something that can be restored. And when we recognize we are a redeemed people who have and are some messed up people. Hear me when I say it. We've got to have a serious change of heart and repent of our sins. But then we've got to return and get back to God. And then pray that the Lord will send a revival. I'm done. So let me close by saying... If a revival, if a real revival is going to take place, first we've got to recognize the fact that we are a messed up people. We've got to recognize who God is. And we've got to realize that God is not happy with how we've been acting. And since we have been redeemed, we've got to open our mouths and say so. And we've got to act like a redeemed people. And as a redeemed people, we've got to repent of our sinful ways, but we've also got to return back to the Lord. Y'all have told me I'm through, so I'll just start off by acknowledging the fact that, Lord, I'm messed up. And according to to the definition of sin, even as a pastor, even as one of your under shepherds, Lord, I can't make it on my own. In my flesh, I can't satisfy. The old wretched man that I am. So I've got to ask you, Lord, can I come on home? Lord, I, I, I want to come home. I, I tried to do it on my own, but I couldn't do it. I, I asked my friends and my loved ones, but they couldn't do it. Well, I even found a few servants of yours, and I asked them. I said, hey, Adam, can you help me out? Adam said, I'm sorry, but, but I'm a saint with a sinner problem. And when I was in the garden with Eve, I ate the fruit to satisfy myself. I said, well, how about you old man Saul? You ought to be able to help me. He says, no, I'm sorry. I had a jealous bone in my body. And y'all church folk know about some jealousy. I, I, I said, uh, how about you, Solomon? Men, close your ears here. Solomon says, I'm sorry, small, but, but I've got a thing about pretty women. And I can't help you either. So, Lord, I, I've come to my senses. 
I've been reading the prayers of your servants and the hymnals of the Jews. I've been singing the songs and praying the prayers of Asaph and David. I've come across a few that might help you understand my heart when I say, Lord, I need restoration. So will you please send a revival? I, I, I pray Psalm number one, where I read, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And I read about the ungodly that are about like the chaff which have uh, the wind driveth away. And I read the close of Psalm number one that said, the ungodly shall perish. And God, I don't want to die this kind of death. Lord, if you will, I read what David said in Psalm number 23. And I acknowledge you as my shepherd. So will you do for me like you did for him in the third verse of Psalm number 23. God, will you restore my soul? Lord, just like in the 27th number of Psalm, God, I acknowledge that you are my light and my salvation. And you are the strength of my life. And therefore, there's one thing that I desire of you, God, and that will I seek after. Uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So God, will you hear my cry? Uh, and if you don't hear my cry now, uh, I read in Psalm number 30 that the anger endures but just for a moment. Uh, and in your favor, there is life. Uh, God, your word, I read it there, that said weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Lord, I, I kept on reading. I got to Psalm number 51, and I asked that you would have mercy on me according to thy loving kindness. God, would you blot out my transgressions? God, would you wash me from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins? Uh, I acknowledge my sin is ever before me and against thee and only thee have I sinned uh, and I've done wrong in your sight. And although I was shipwrecked in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me, so Lord would you purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Uh, I got it got real good in Psalm number 51. So Lord, would you wash me and I shall be white as snow? Uh, would you create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me? God, please cast me not away from thy presence and please don't take your holy spirit away from me and now Lord I heard what Asa said in Psalm number 80 so will you turn us again to yourself O oh Lord of heaven's armies will you make your face shine upon us and only then will be saved we beg of you Lord would you come back Oh God of heaven's armies, would you look down from heaven and see our plight? The, the, the reality is, this really is your servant's prayer. So let me give it to you the Ryan B. Small way. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of the mess that I got into. God, I'm sorry for all of the folly I engaged in. God, I'm sorry for all of the church members I cussed out. God, I'm sorry when I didn't want to study your word. God, I'm sorry when I turned down the opportunity to preach your word. God, I'm sorry. We praise you, O oh God, for the sign of thy love. For Jesus, who on one Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died and is now gone above. I, I thank you, Brianna, for singing the song that says, 
my hallelujah, yeah. it belongs to you. But I like the way the old church sang at the revival closing. They sang a song that said, hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Would you revive us again? Starlight, uh, I'm going to tell uh, of his favor, uh, and I'm going to tell uh, of his love, uh, and I'm going to tell uh, of his goodness. Uh, Y'all want to know what he did for me. Uh, he purchased my redemption uh, with his own precious blood, uh, and from sin, uh, Jesus set me free. Yeah. 
virtual hand, or whether you're in this place. Let me tell you what he can do. Oh, yeah. He can make your heart brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all you have to do is have faith. Receive. And once you've done that, if you haven't done that, there ought to be an outward show for that inward change. Jesus says, baptize me.
Now here's how we're going to do it so that we can uh, make this uh, as brisk as we can so that we can leave with that word on our heart. All right, so what we're going to have is the remarks I just made. I just made them. All right, all right. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're shutting our broadcast down at this point. For those of you who are part of our broadcast, you know um, uh, the way that you can share with us. Uh, and it should be online. So uh, be sure to do it. I thank God many of them have been very, very generous. And we praise God. And then, so what we want to do real quick, I named uh, 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 the people who are in here. Uh, I want, here's how I want to do this real quick. 